I'm Blair Gilbert here from MrHardware.com and Gilbert's Pro Hardware in St. Clair Shores, Michigan to show a quick way to prep a steel seawall. We had stones against this iron that you're going to see and a storm had come through here and washed the stones down and you can see all the rust exposed on the inside. Now this is a common area for rust to occur on seawalls is at the ground level where dew gets it wet yet never quite gets dry, rust thrives on it. So, what we're going to show you here is some asphalt, some Skyco. It stops rust, prepares rusted metal surfaces. This is the same as must for rust that I've used in other videos. So here's step one. Get the asphalt coat on the steel. You don't necessarily have to sand it and prep it. You just have to get it sprayed on, get it liberally wet. This is going to dry. It's going to leave a slight white film on the surface. Perfect. This product works so well, the phosphoric acid helps soften the rust. So if I could sand it, if I was willing to sand it, the easy rust falls off. Then I put a second coat of asphalt coat on. It preps the, the metal, gets the oxygen out so the rust is dead. So I don't even have to use a special primer. I can just use a slightly thinned down version of my industrial enamel paint and that'll coat over this. This baby would be good 10, 12 years from now. I won't have to deal with it. The asphalt coat is a waterborne phosphoric acid. It's going to dry on a nice warm day in about an hour or two. So you can paint in four hours, typically, as long as it's dry. So you just wait for this to dry out. You don't want to put oil-based paint over a damp latex surface. This asphalt coat will typically prevent metal from getting rusty again without me doing a single step for up to a year. Not guaranteed, but if I got a rusty old truck or rusty old seawall, I could do this once a year if I don't have time to get a good coat of paint on it. Still retain the integrity of my steel so that my seawall doesn't rust out. When you're spraying this product, you need to make sure that you don't get it too much in the water. Being an acid, it is biodegradable. So as long as there are only trace amounts, it will dissolve and break down in the water relatively quickly. However, if you were pouring a gallon of this in the water, you'd be killing some fish or some wildlife around you. So that is not the plan. Keep it from going in the water. How important it is, in my case, to save the seawall. So what I've done is, I put some of this in my tank sprayer. I set the tank sprayer wand for a fine mist. And as you may or may not be able to tell, unfortunately our lighting is bad today, but we're gonna go along and I'm going to spray the seawall and this is going to coat the seawall it's going to suck the oxygen out of the rust it's going to soften the rust so when I come back here at a later date some oil based industrial enamel and I paint this this is going to take and make my seawall at least for 10 years safe from the rust while we're back this coat should take care of the seawall I should be rust free for 10 more years so let me show you some of the stuff I'm going to use. I've got some Velspar oil base anti-rust paint. It's around $16 a quart. I'm going for a satin finish. I really don't like high gloss, plus it's slippery. We're going to go for the satin. So we're going to use an oil base paint, which is a great rust preventer all on its own. I'm going to put this on using a clean and seal deck sprayer. So this tank sprayer has got a nozzle that has a square that's going to give me a fan. This is a fan nozzle and this is the overspray protector. So when I'm using this we're going to be able to spray in the seawall and you're going to see how neat this job can be done. This tank sprayer is not too expensive either, $16-$17. dollars place I can't get to and whenever you're using paint you always need to use a brush to clean up and if I need to smooth it or push it around this is a, just a cute little Linzer roller but what's nice is it's four dollars. It's a pan it's a roller that end paints in a kit. It's hard to beat. I got this, I can go through and touch up anything I have to touch up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this paint, I'm going to mix it 10% or so. I need to get it from vitamin D consistency down to 2% milk consistency. It has to be a little watery for it to go through the sprayer properly. I'm going to use paint thinner to thin this paint. I'm checking to see if I cut the paint too thin, if it's going to cover or not. It's a little on the too thin side. appears as though we're going to cover all right. 
Away we go. But the easy thing is it's nice having this roller with that end that paints on the end because I can take the roller I can even out the paint I can get the bottom of the cap and then I can get the top of the cap how nice this is going on now this is just the first coat when I come back and put the second coat on here this baby's gonna look like a factory finish in order to clean our tank sprayer, we need to pour out any leftover residue paint that was inside. Then we're going to throw in a little thinner, shake it out, run it through the hose. We're going to do it about three times until the paint thinner runs clean. A lot of times I'll recycle the paint thinner when it's not looking too bad, put it back in the tank sprayer just to take and help wash it all out real well. That's where it's going to spit again. Each time I put paint in there, I try to get each piece as clean as possible. See the nice fan I'm getting? That's just paint thinner. Fortunately, our municipality around here allows us to take and turn in our old solvents and such. Now we're just trying to get our equipment all cleaned out, ready for the next spin be doing this again when we do our second coat. We don't want to waste this tank sprayer, economical as it is or not. Everything inside is getting runnier each time. You see a little paint on there, but it's mostly pretty thin. Make sure you always clean out the little rubber stock at the bottom several times. We're not done. We're going to run a little bit more through this baby yet. Tim, I'm over here. There's my second batch of thinner. You're going to see it's getting less paint. Here, I'll show it on the side of the can. You can see how it's pretty transparent. There's a little bit of white coloring in there, but not very much. One more dose, this baby's going to be clean enough to put away for the next time. A lot of times I'll take the nozzle, I'll take the tip off, I'll put the tip in a little paint thinner in a plastic container or a paint thinner safe container for a little bit. And then when I put the, the parts back together, it'll be pretty much absolutely clean. Make sure you get all your gaskets clean, clean, clean. Just because they're up high in the tank doesn't mean you can leave anything in there to ruin your day in the next pass. I'd see a little bit more. Not looking bad. See, look, nice and clear now. Now this sprayer, I may leave a little bit of thinner in here because I'm coming back to this job. So here's my nozzle. Just a nozzle and a cap. But there could be a little bit of paint hiding in here. So I like to take it apart. Take a little thinner and make sure that they're clean. We did a good job. So when I come through my next job, this should be all set up, put my second coat on this wall, all will be well.